WandaVision doesn't look like your average superhero show. The first three episodes are a copy, I mean tribute, to American sitcoms of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. There's so much visual history packed into these years, and it's refreshing to see a modern recreation of these eras. How can photographers in turn pay tribute to WandaVision? What photographic techniques can we learn from over three decades of television history? Let's find out. In this video, I'll be focusing on the first two episodes of WandaVision. The first thing that separates sitcoms from other TV shows or films is the lighting. And to see the reason why, you need to understand how sitcoms developed. The first major sitcom, the one that became a blueprint for all to follow, is I Love Lucy, which ran from 1951 to 1957. Sitcoms were different from other shows at the time because they were filmed in front of a studio audience. And because of this, TV crews had to upgrade their production to keep up with the demands of filming a high volume of episodes in front of a live audience. Hollywood films at the time used the single camera mode of production in which each shot and camera angle is taken with the same camera. This gives the director more control over each shot but is more time consuming as the camera needs to be moved to reshoot and relight a scene from a different angle. Reshooting scenes in front of a live studio audience is not an efficient nor entertaining experience and so I Love Lucy made use of a three camera setup. Cameras were set up on mobile platforms and would simultaneously shoot three different angles of a scene. This significantly cut down on filming time a typical 22 minute episode could be shot in 60 minutes, while feature films took months to shoot. However, a three camera setup introduced a new challenge. The lighting now had to be even across all three camera angles. Cinematographer Carl Freund was instrumental in developing a way to uniformly light the set so that each of the three cameras would pick up the same quality of image. Strong overhead lights were used to minimize shadows and contrast. As a result, you don't see deep shadows in I Love Lucy. Instead, you'll see the images are low contrast with several shades of grey, maybe even 50 of them. Another reason for having this high key look is that when the image was broadcast, each stage of transmission would deepen the contrast, so having a low contrast image to begin with would ensure the quality of the final transmission. This low contrast look was so important that cans of white and grey paint were kept on set to paint out shadows that were too dark. Wardrobes for the actors were also carefully selected to avoid high contrast colours. This approach was replicated during the first episode of WandaVision. You can see the low contrast look with flat lighting, and they even had to paint Vision blue instead of his characteristic maroon colour in order to reduce the contrast in the final black and white image. How does this apply to photography? Well, you rarely see low contrast images in photography. Having a moody, high contrast look is a lot more popular. Flat lighting is seen as dull, two-dimensional, and undesirable. But there are a few circumstances where having a low contrast look can be a sensible photographic choice. In the case of portraits, if the skin of your subjects has features that you'd like to hide, such as wrinkles, acne, or scars, Low contrast will mask them instead of highlight them. Stylistically, it can be used when you're looking for a softer, calmer, dreamier look. In the case of I Love Lucy or WandaVision, if you're filming a light-hearted, family-friendly show in suburbia, this low contrast look with flat lighting makes sense. One benefit of shooting black and white in modern times is that you can use color selectively to control what the viewer pays attention to. In films, it can be used as a powerful foreshadowing technique. In the second episode of WandaVision, selective color is used to create tension. Color is a foreign entity intruding on an idyllic, grayscale world. When it comes to photography, selective color is a popular technique to draw the viewer's attention to specific aspects of your picture. 
because it's supposed to be eye-catching, red and yellow are some of the most often used colors. It's a pretty common technique among beginner photographers, to the point to where it's a bit of a cliche, but it remains a effective technique to highlight key aspects of your image. Throughout the first episodes of One Division, there are some simple composition techniques that are used to create a more pleasing image. Along with the flat lighting previously discussed, there is also flat composition. You'll find many establishing shots are head-on and exhibit symmetry. Generally speaking, symmetrical shots are more pleasing to look at and have the added benefit of giving you a sense that you're watching a play on a stage. Another characteristic look of sitcoms is that their shots fill the frame, which is exactly what it sounds like. You fill your photograph with more of the subject. In the first few episodes of One Division, you'll rarely see wide shots where the subjects are small because it's the subjects and their interactions with each other that are the focus of sitcoms. When you do have several people in frame at once, you'll notice that if the shot is longer than a few seconds, it's rare to see more than three people in frame at once. And if we think of this in terms of composition, it's referred to as the rule of odds, which states, when including groups, an odd number of subjects produces a more visually pleasing composition than an even number. For whatever reason, odd numbers, especially groups of three, are more palatable to the human eye. Even when you have more than three people on the screen at once, for example, when shooting large group photos, one way to retain the individuality of the subjects is to arrange them into groups of three. Annie Leibovitz does this a lot with her portraits. A last composition technique you can see on one division is the frame within a frame. This is when you use an object within the image to frame the subject. On the show, they've used a wardrobe and a kitchen pass, but you can also use other objects such as windows, arches, doorways, and more to frame your shots nicely. Well, there you go. You now have more techniques in your photography toolbox, courtesy of WandaVision. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below, and stay tuned for more.